All right, so the next thing we're going to do is to complete the backend part of our YouTube application. So just let me show you what all we'll be creating in this video. So we'll be creating an API to save user details to the database. We have implemented OAuth 2 in our database, but we did not yet save the user details to the database. So we'll be doing that first. And after that, we will be creating an API to like or dislike a video and also to subscribe or unsubscribe from a channel, from a user. So it's not a video, from a user and add and view comments on a video. So let's go ahead and implement all these functionalities. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a repository for our user. So if you remember, we have already created the, the user entity for the MongoDB, but we did not yet create the repository to store the users. So I'm going to open the repository package and create a new class. This should be an interface called user repository. And uh, this repository should extend Mongo repository, which takes in generic types of user and the key is of type string. So the next thing is to create the controller. To create the endpoint, first we need the controller class. So I'm going to create user controller and uh, add the rest controller annotation followed by the request mapping annotation. It's going to be slash API slash user. And inside the class, I'm going to create a get mapping annotation called as register, register, that's it. And uh, we are going to create a method public string register. So we are just going to send a confirmation message whether the user registration is successful or not. So this is going to be return user registration successful right something like that as part of the registration we need some kind of user information right to, re to register the user to save the user details in the database we need some kind of user details but we are just receiving a token from the back end from the front end as well as like from the http client right so just from the token how can we receive the user information so we can make use of the user info endpoint which I have mentioned before, we can get this endpoint details from the discovery document. So let me open the discovery document once more, one more time. So if I open the link programming techie dot well known open ID configuration, here you can see that we have the, we have the user info endpoint. So when we call this user info endpoint, we will get all the information about the particular user, right? We are going to, what we are going to do is make use, make use of this particular URL and call this particular URL from our Spring Boot application and then we will receive all the relevant details of the user. So let's go ahead and do that. For that, first we have to define a new property inside our application the properties file. So that's this I'm going to call as odd zero dot user info endpoint equals this one, right? So I'm going to keep this aside and continue building the endpoint. So in, back inside the user controller, we have to read the JSON web token coming in from the HTTP client or from the Angular application, right? So we can read that by first just adding the method parameter called as authentication to the register method. So what Spring will do is it will automatically inject the authentication object. So whatever uh, object which is created while the user authentication is successful, it will inject into the method. And from there, I can type in authentication dot get principle. So this will receive, uh, this will return a generic object. So this we have to, we have to parse this according to our requirements as we need a JSON web token coming in from the client. So I'm going to cast this object into a JSON web token object from Spring Security or to GWT package. Let's let me import this class and I'm going to create a new variable call as JWT and store this object here, right? So now we will have, now we have the JSON web token with us. So next, what we have to do is to call the user info endpoint. So as we don't want to add all the business logic in our controller, let's create a service called as user service or else like user registration service. 
and this class is going to be a service so i'm going to add the service annotation and inside this class i'm going to create third called as register user and inside this class we also need access to the user repository so that we can save the user details to the database so for that first i'm going to add the required args constructor so that the user repository will be automatically injected through the constructor and i'm just going to define the user repository so now we have access to the user repository and also created the method register user so inside this register user method first we have to make a call to the user info endpoint right and after that fetch user details and save them to the database so this is what we are going to do in this method so for that first we need to inject the user info endpoint into the class so for that i'm going to type in at value annotation so that we can read the properties into our class so i'm going to type in dollar and brackets and inside the brackets i'm going to type in auth zero dot user info endpoint let me make sure that i've typed correctly so this user info endpoint so i've made it info as small i so let's use the same property here i'm going to read the value of this property into a string called as private string user info endpoint so now we are going to make a http call to this user info endpoint and we need to also get hold of the token so that we can pass the token when making the call to the user info endpoint or else we will receive an unauthorization unauthorization error if you check the back the discovery document when i clicked on this user info endpoint you can see that we received an unauthorized error because i did not pass in the token when making a call to this uh, endpoint right so first we have to get hold of the token the JWT token and then include that token as part of the request. All right, so to get the token, we have to pass the JWT, which we have inside the user controller to the user registration service. So for that, I'm going to first inject the user registration service class, private final user registration service. And I'm going to add the required args constructor annotation so that it will create automatically the constructor and inject the required user registration service so i'm going to use this user registration service variable inside the register method so i'm going to type in user registration service dot register user and we need to provide the jwt here right so i'm going to type in jwt dot get token value we are passing in the token value as a, the method parameter but our register user method is still not is not defined with this particular string argument so i'm going to type in string token value to fix the compilation error so now i have the token value from using this token value i can make a http call to the user info endpoint so i can do that by making use of the http client inbuilt http client of java so i'm going to first create the http request using the http request dot new builder and i'm going to make a get call so for that i'm going to type in dot get and the uri is going to be uri dot create and i'm going to pass in the user info endpoint right and after that i'm going to set the header the authorization header it's going to be authorization header um, and the authorization header is should be in the form of bearer followed by the jwt token right so for that i am going to type in string dot format so that i can easily append the jwt token to the bearer string i am going to type in bearer and i am going to type in percentage s as the placeholder and at the runtime the string dot format method is going to add in the token value so it's going to add in the token value so at the end it will be resolved as bearer space the actual token value will be replaced to this placeholder and after that i'm going to call the build method so that it will we will receive the http request object i'm going to create a new local variable called as http request and after that now i'm going to make the actual http call so for that i'm going to make use of the http client uh, class so http client 
dot new builder i'm going to again build the http client class so i'm going to make use of the http client version 2 so version http 2 and then call the build object so that now i will receive the http client let's rename this as http client so now we have the http client and as well as the http request so let's make the call by typing http client dot send and the send method is going to take the request and the body handler so what is the kind of body we are going to receive so as we are receiving a json as we'll be receiving a json as a response so it's easy to just set the body handler as string so i'm going to type in http request comma http response dot body handlers dot of string so in this way our http client will understand that uh, the response is going to be a string and we are getting an error, error here so it says that it may throw an io exception and interrupted exception so let's enclose this particular http send call into a try catch block and inside the catch i'm going to call in the exception and throw a new runtime exception called exception occurred while registering user right and i'm going to provide the exception details now we can save this response we'll get from the http call into a new local variable called as response string something like that we also close this project window so that you can see it better so this now we have the response string now we have to pass this response string into a json object right so but first of all let's understand how this response looks like so let's make a call to this user info endpoint from postman so i'm going to create a new tab pass in the user info endpoint and in the authorization i'm going to make use of the bearer token and uh, the bearer token will be automatically added to the new tab so i'm just going to click on send all right so you can see that here we are still getting the unauthorized error back from auth0 this is because the token we have used to make this call we got it from making a call to the token endpoint from auth0 using the grant type as client credentials right so in the client credentials grant type what will happen is you will don't get the necessary profile details like the user information about the user to get the access token which has user information we have to use the token which is created by the front end itself so for that i'm going to open the angular application and first of all i'm going to add some information in our authconfig.module.ts file so i opened authconfig.module.ts file and inside the scope we can define the permissions as well as the kind of data which our application can access right so in the scope you can see that so the open id data the data about the access token and the id token and uh, the opaque token the profile information which means the information about first and last name of the user and i'm going to add another scope called as email so that the token will also have access to the email information of the user so right because to save the user details email is one of the uh, primary field we are going to use in our back in our database so we also need access to the email so for that i added the email uh, scope to our authconfig.module.ts file so once this is done make sure you start your angular application and first of all i'm going to make sure that i clear my cache i have so first i have to log out so for that temporarily i'm going to open dev tools and go to the session storage and make sure you clear the session storage right so this will make sure to then this will ask you to re-log in so i'm going to refresh now you can see the login button and click on the login button and now you're logged in if i open the dev tools one more time then in the session storage you can see that in the auth authentication result tab access token information so i'm just going to copy the access token which is inside the whole access token 
right make sure you copy it correctly without the quotes so let's go back to the postman client and in the user info endpoint call i'm going to replace this token remove the token and paste the new token and now if i make the call you can see that we have received the user information so this is just my information let's make use of this information now so we can see that we have the given name family name the nickname and uh, the the picture of your of your google login of whatever login you have made some some information will be there here so now let's make use of this information and save this information in the database so i'm going to open intellij and go to the user registration service so now you can see that we have received the json body and now we have to transform this json string into an object right so for that we can make use of something called as an object mapper inside spring so this will object mapper i'm going to create a new object for the object mapper and uh, to if you be able to convert to an object first we need to create a class right so to which object we have to convert the json string so for that i'm going to create a new object called as user info dto inside the dto package so let's create a new class called as user info dto and i'm just going to copy paste some the fields which we need for the user info as you've already saw the response which is coming in so in each of the fields which we are receiving from the response i am created a field with the same name sub given name family name nickname name and if i open intellij again it's the same sub given name family name name and picture so whatever fields i want to retrieve from the json response i've just defined it inside the class and the important thing is i've added an annotation called as json property so this will um, define the exact field name which is inside the json object so for example we have the given name which is defined as given underscore name but i don't want to define the, the field inside the class as given underscore name right this doesn't fit with the java naming convention so for that i just use the json property so i'm going to now parse this string to the user info dto object so for that i'm going to go back to the user registration service and i'm going to type in object mapper dot read value and pass in the body of the json and i'm going to parse it into a user info dto object right again just to recap what's happening so first we will get the token and from that token we are going to make a http call to the user info endpoint from auth0 and uh, based on the response we are going to parse that response into a user info dto object and once we get all these details we are going to save this to the database so we are going to do that next before saving this to the database we have to add some small configuration to the object mapper right so you can observe that we have not yet not we are not reading all the properties which are inside the response right like so what will happen is while reading the information through the object mapper if you are not reading all the values it will fail right so just to make sure that it will not fail we are going to add a property called as object mapper dot configure i'm going to type in deserialization future dot fail on unknown properties and i'm going to set it as false right so if we don't set this property what will happen is if uh, the auth0 is sending some other two fields through some other two additional fields and we are not reading those additional fields then object mapper will fail so we are configuring object mapper to not fail when we have received some unknown properties to us one now we will have the user info dto object so now let's create the object for the user so i'm going to create a new user and set user dot set first name as user info and info dto dot get given name user dot set last name as user info dto dot get family name user dot set full name as user info dto dot get name and finally user dot set email address as user info dto dot get email
save this user to the database so i'm going to type in user repository dot save user so let's test whether this is working correctly or not i'm going to restart my server and let's just add a breakpoint to check whether everything is working fine or not now let's go back to our postman client and make use of the same token just don't forget that or else it will won't work you will get 401 unauthorized error so make use of the same token to make a call to the register endpoint so i'm going to make a call to send yeah first of all we have a breakpoint at the user controller so i'm going to resume the program execution all right so now you can see that inside the body we have already got so the required information as a json response as a json string and now we are able to easily pass this information to the user info dto object so i think as everything is fine i'm going to remove the breakpoint and just let the program execution continue so now the user should be saved successfully let's confirm this by checking the mongodb so if you check the user collection inside the mongodb you can see that we have all the fields we have configured the first name last name full name and the email address so all right so this is working fine let's go ahead and implement our next functionality to like or dislike a video